Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I'm going to start by introducing myself. My name's Ollie. Um, I work as part of the 2020 Fusion Support Team. I've um, been working at 2020 for five years now. And today we're, just, we're going to cover some questions that have been submitted prior to the webinar. Um, it's, it's going to be a fairly short one, so let's, let's get started. And another reminder is we do have a 2020 Fusion free trial, uh, which you can download from our website. The trial is a 30-day free trial. Okay, um, so yeah, let's go on to the first question. Um, this is a common one uh, that was submitted, and we received quite a few calls on the helpline. Um, so it's how to tile a wall. So um, obviously, if you've got the full Fusion package, you will have access to the coverings feature. Um, the coverings feature is quite a powerful tool. You can um, you can tile your floor and your walls with it. So I'm just going to open an example design, and we'll take a look. Perfect. So um, when it comes to tiling walls, you can you can either do one wall at a time, or you can select all walls. If you're going to tile all walls together, you would need to use the once you've selected the walls, which you can do by holding Shift and multiple select, you can go to the Insert tab, and you can do standard wall. Um, so if you use the standard wall, this only allows you to create one tiling zone. Um, in this example, I'm just going to tile one wall. So I'm going to select the north wall here. And we're going to go to coverings, and we're going to use advanced wall. We're going to use advanced wall because this gives you the ability to create multiple tiling zones. So now we're in the tiling feature, um, and we need to create a zone. So you can click on the new button here. You can expand the menu, which gives you multiple options, or you can just click on the top half of the button, which will present you with this window here. Um, we're going to set a category. Um, so the top is currently set to ceiling, so let's set it to uh, the wall units. And then we can do it from the worktop. Um, but as you can see, you can also switch between the options and type in your own your own amount, so your own numeric value. I'm going to use the predefined categories here. Uh, I'm going to hit OK. And as you can see, it's now all inserted a tiling zone. If you want to adjust this zone, you can use some of the tools provided here. So we've got a stretch edge tool. Um, so for example, I may have done that too high, so you can simply drag it down. There we go. Um, Deselect the tool. There's a couple of different tools here which you can use, um, but we're going to move on and now insert some tiles. So I need to select the zone, which you can do by clicking or selecting here. And then we're going to hit modify. Um, and this is where we can now um, choose a tile we, we want to use. So you can see you've got your different patterns, plain brick, herringbone combination, different options for colors. And here's where you can choose your t uh, what catalog we want to use. Uh, I'm going to move to the Fusion Tiles catalog um, because the benefit of Fusion Tiles catalog is it gives you the option to define the grout also. Um, Okay, so you've got all your predefined tile sizes here, but as this is a generic catalog, we're going to click all tiles, hit add, and you can see it presents us with a list of tiles. Um, one quick note is that um, you can import your own tiles. So, for example, you could go on Google, um, find a tile, save the image to your desktop, and then you can, when you get to this screen here, you can hit manage my surface materials and import your own. As you can see, I've got a few already. Um, but in this case, we're just going to use a, a standard one from Fusion Tiles. Hit OK. Um, as it's a, it's a generic tiling catalog, so I can change the size here if needed. And then I can also change the grout. So we could choose a black grout, and we can change the thickness as well. There we go. Um, so obviously I've put some large tiles there. And as I said, because we're in advanced tiling mode, you can add in a secondary tiling zone. So for example, I'm going to use a slightly different tool this time, but we're going to use the freehand rectangle tool. Um, so I could technically draw 
our zone in there um, and then we can select the zone 2 and I can actually put a different tile in this zone which we're going to do now um, and like I said you can create as many zones as you want on one wall um, but yeah that's, that's tiling so let's move back to the presentation Um, obviously, like I said, bear in mind you can tile the floor and ceiling as well via the coverings tool. But the next question was how to add a, a sloped ceiling to my design. Um, although this is a feature that's been around for a while, it's still a highly common question we receive in the, within the support team. So we're going to just going to move into a slightly different room now. And I'll show you how to add in a, a sloped ceiling. When it when it comes to adding sloped ceilings, um, it, it's pretty straightforward, um, as I'm going to show you now. The, the first thing to do is to figure out where the lowest point of the slope is going to be. Um, in this example I'm going to show you now, I'd put the lowest point of the slope sort of on the north wall. Um, and we now need to match that wall in height to the same as what the lowest point of the slope would be. So that's the standard height at the minute. Um, let's change it to sorry, 1800 for example. Um, we can also change the thickness if needed. Um, but the main point is we need to match the height to the lowest point of the slope. Then I'm going to move over to your catalog items. Um, this is your slope ceiling selector. We're going to click here, and scroll down and grab my multi-line drawing tool. Um, I'm going to set the predefined height of floor, which is going to be obviously the lowest point, so 1800. And then we're going to grab the tool and commence drawing. So obviously, first click is start where you want to draw the slope in, um, and then you can so you click again to change direction, and then double click to finish. Um, so obviously, I've added two points to my slope here. Um, which we're going to view in perspective now. And you can see the slope there. Obviously, you can match the height of these walls here. Um, let's see, the next point is most most slope ceilings will contain a VLUX window. Um, so we're going to move into the elevation view because this is where you would add your VLUX. I'm going to look at wall two and then we're going to add it in. So um, as you notice at the beginning of this, I've changed the, the depth of this wall to 300. Um, the reason I've done that is because when adding a VLUX window in, I like to have a bit of an indent. So let's move back to elevation. Um, I'm going to go to your window selector, grab a VLUX. You can drag and drop it in. Um, if you hold control, it lets you move it up or down. So first of all, I'm going to drop it into the wall. I'm dropping it into the wall first so it picks up the depth of the wall. And then I'm going to grab it again, hold and control, move it up, and insert it. And it will now have a slight indent, as you can see. Um, obviously, if you don't want the sort of recess indent, just drop it straight in the slope ceiling. Okay, so that was slope ceiling. Let's move on to the next one. Which was how, so when and how to use virtual walls. Um, okay, so let's switch back here. Actually, we could probably use this design here. Okay, so I'm going to clear this quickly. Um, virtual walls um, come in handy for mainly for when drawing in um, island units. Um, one, because you can snap a unit to an island unit. And two, because um, once you draw in a virtual wall, it automatically creates a, uh, a viewing point for your ele elevation view. And um, obviously, as you know, when, when viewing an island, you need, you need to be able to view a wall to view the island in elevation. So let's draw it in now. Okay, so virtual wall selector is there. 
Um, I'll, I always use double, the virtual double, um, but I'm just going to draw one in. So, for example, I've drawn in a virtual wall. Um, now, when it comes to obviously adding units in, I'm just going to grab a couple of generic ones. So let's grab a B100, and you can see straight away it's snapping to the wall. Um, this generally makes it easier when putting your island units together. We had another run in on the other side. You can see as it snaps. Um, it, like I said, it's generally easier to put them together. Um, and as I said, now we've drawn that in, it would have automatically created some viewing points in elevation. So let's switch to elevation. And you can see straight away, um, so we're in Fusion version 6, you've got your virtual A, which I can see one side of the island, and then virtual B, which shows you the other. Um, as I said, um, th this makes the whole viewing process of islands a lot easier, um, and is definitely the way to do it. So yeah, that was virtual walls, and we're going to move on to the next question now, which was applying a surface cover into a box. Um, again, this feature has been around for a while, um, but it, it's still a question we commonly receive on the helpline on, on a weekly basis. So um, when it comes to tiling or applying a surface cover into a box, my advice is always use the style box from Advanced Graphics, which we're going to go add in now. I've added my box, um, and now obviously we need to select the surface to tile. So we're going to switch to perspective view. You can see the box there. I switch to a color fill for quickness. Um, so yeah, we go to the insert tab, select surface, and now we need to select the face of a box. I've only selected one there, but if you hold shift, you can select multiple. Um, but in this case, we're just going to select the one. So once you've got the surface selected, again, it's Insert Tab, Coverings, Item Surface. And it's very similar to sort of tiling a normal wall. Um, obviously, we don't have to create a zone. It takes us straight into the location where we can share a tile. Um, and like I said, same procedure as before. You can select any tile, or you can even select a surface material. So there's a planked grey. That's just a custom material I found online. And there we go. We've applied the surface material to the box. Okay, so moving on. Um, obviously, how to apply joints to my worktops. Um, it's something that a lot of us do forget. Um, but when inserting worktop, um, obviously, the, the second stage of auto features is where you can insert and apply your joints. So we're going to move on to that now. Just going to open this room. There we go. So obviously, I've just got a basic design here, just an L-shaped kitchen, um, and we're going to apply some worktops via the auto features feature which is located in the insert tab. We shall go there now. Okay, so yeah, insert and then we've got auto features. Okay, there we go. Um so yeah I'm gonna deselect everything, just leave worktop enabled. Um leave the edit worktop button selectors. As I said I've just got generic universal kitchens catalog. OK, it's going to apply the worktop. And as I said, everyone, most people are familiar with the first stage where you can drag and extend the worktop. It's the second stage, um, which a lot of people seem to just sort of click next stage and go through. But um, especially when using manufacturer's catalogs, it's quite important to apply the joints. So as you can see, you've got your different tools here. You've got the auto joint which most of the time will automatically apply it for you, or you've got your manual tools. Um, and if you can see, as I'm flicking through the tools, you'll see red triangles or red dots. Um, these are sort of different points throughout the work to where we can apply a joint. Um, and you've also got your grain direction as well, which allows you to switch the grain direction. I'm going to use this tool here for, for the corner joint. As you can see, it's a red dot. 
click on the red dot and we can now choose where the joint goes it gives us three options um, so choose the top one and then you can hit apply and then next stage um, like, as I said it, I would always advise to use auto joint but if you've got the more sort of complex complicated worktops then it would be easier to manually join it yourselves so the next question is again to do with worktop how to produce a worktop plan um, obviously since in previous versions to produce a worktop plan you'd either have to hide all the layers and just leave on your walls and worktop or you could have went to the print screen so control print and you've got a predefined worktop plan there um, obviously since the since the release of fusion version 6 um, there's actually as soon as you add worktop in there's an automatic named view generated as you can see at the bottom here click worktop plan it, and it disables all the unrelevant layers for you straight away. Um, obviously, you can print this, export it, and it's, it's like I said, this has been introduced in version six, so it's definitely a, a lot easier. It's one click away. Next question is how to produce a 360 panorama. Um, again, this feature has been out for quite a while, but it, it's actually surprising that we still. Receive a lot of calls where some of our users have never used this feature, have seen it, but just never thought to use it. So, um, producing a 360 panorama is pretty straightforward. Um, obviously, the first steps are you need to make sure you've got your dealer details set up. So, to set your dealer details up, you go to the file menu, manage, system, dealer details. Um, you can fill all of these in or just put your name and your email address. And once you've got them in, um, there's a couple of options. We need to go to File and then Options, and you've got your Internet Options, Internet Settings. Sorry. Um, so here is where you can actually set a re resolution type for your panorama. Um, obviously, the higher it is, the longer it takes. Um, so you can also define what email address it picks up. So organization email is the same as your dealer email or you can assign it to the salesperson email and the salesperson email is linked to your 2020 Fusion login. You can also obviously check this button here. What that does is it will disable the preview but it means it will generate the panorama in the background which will allow you to carry on working. Um, obviously in this case I've got it unticked just because I want to demonstrate the preview box that appears. So, um, you can just leave it as that or you can put your customer details in um, I've left customer details blank on this occasion and I, I find that a lot of a lot of users like to see the panorama themselves first and then just forward the email on but obviously that's up that's up to the user themselves so yeah to produce a panorama um, so you just go into perspective so you, um, you need to up the quality render um, in this case I'm just going to leave it in draft and the the best way is to position yourself in the middle of the room. Once you're in the middle of the room, you can either drop the button here, face it to panorama, or you can go to the file menu, export, and you've got the panorama export there, and you can just choose your render. Um, so as you can see, I haven't put a custom email address in, but that's fine. I'm just going to hit continue, click yes, and the panorama will start producing. Um, here's the preview I mentioned. So if you're happy with the preview, um, you can just hit publish and it then give you a link, or you can cancel, make a few adjustments to your design, and then start again. Um, but yeah, that's how to produce panorama. Okay, I think that was the last question. So I just want to say thanks to everyone for joining today. Um, obviously, the Fusion support team is open Monday to Friday, nine to six. If you've got any questions, you can give us a call or send us an email. Okay, thank you. Cheers.